Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today it's into the biggest of them all, Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our Let's Play by Email against the devilish Mr. Lodrick, and as you can see, it is March 27th, 1942, Dateline, do -do 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 -do. Uh, and this is the setup phase, so we're going to do our usual, we're going to check out some stats, look around the map a little bit, and do a deep dive into China, uh, go see what's going on on the Chinese front, uh, it's not all good news, uh, let's put it that way. Um, okay, you see here in and around Pearl Harbor, we've got actually quite a bit of activity going on. Uh, what do we have here? Well, we've got the DD case is out here, the destroyer, looking around for some submarine activity. We've got three different task forces heading uh, south out of Pearl Harbor. Uh, you can see this is a just a uh, cargo ship, the Suva, that's along with the Ralph Tab Talbot running escort with that. Then we have the Porter, the Gamble, the Hovey, uh, all running escort with again another cargo ship and then a plane cargo ship they're both carrying planes uh they've got vmfs on them vms here uh, vmf vmsb those are marine planes american marine planes they are also carrier capable i'm going to take them to suva in case uh, once we get the carriers down there we may just want to uh put some uh more planes on them or you know, if planes get destroyed, we'll have those at Suva because I don't expect our carriers will be hanging around Pearl Harbor much longer. We also then have another group here of VMs. Uh, same idea. Now that we're going to Pago Pago first with these, uh, we can go look at these aircraft and see what they are. Just three, four, four, or F four Fs. Boy, that's hard to say really fast. F four F. Um, now. As Stanley says, sometimes I should have broken that one up probably and absorbed it into this other group. I believe, nope, those are buffaloes. That's why I didn't did it, do it. Only four buffaloes there. Uh, I didn't get those absorbed into other groups. And so I'm having to send them on their own. If we look on the caster, we've got the 18 of the Wildcats. So I could have consolidated these, I believe, into just one. These are Dauntlesses though. So the buffaloes would have had to go on their own. Uh, but the Wildcats, Wildcats, I think I could have put together. I don't know what the limit on those Wildcats are in a squadron, uh, but that's one thing that we could have consolidated. Oh, okay. Um, I've got a, just, I think this is a patrol gunboat. Yep, the Charleston. We've got some cargo. This is just a CS going back and forth to Johnston Island, carrying some supply, making sure we're getting supply out there. You see some submarines that are heading to other locations southwest there. This one's actually coming back. Back. It's a group of two, the Cuttlefish and the Dolphin. They're heading back into Pearl Harbor uh, to refresh a little bit. Uh, they need some fuel and probably some ordnance. Um, we've got another patrol craft around here. Sometimes I just like to see what's going on at Pearl Harbor, obviously, as the Allied player. It's the most important place you have on the map. Uh, we've got a little AKL that goes back and forth to Midway Island, a one-point ship. Just making sure it's got supply. I've got a couple of them doing that. I think, uh, no, actually, this is coming back. Oh, I just dropped uh, anti-aircraft out at Midway. I think that's what I dropped off out here with that task force. Let's see. Yeah, we got a little uh, 97th Coastal AA Regiment that I've dropped off out at Midway. And now this task force that carried it out there is coming back. You see the AP in there. There was an AK that went along uh, with a little bit of supply. You may as well do that uh, together. And uh, then the destroyer along for escort. Okay, uh, let's go look at the stats uh, very quickly. 5981 on the Allied sorties, 9046 for Japanese sorties. You can see we've now run 290,000. He's run 438,000 sorties. Air to air losses. We took 25. He took 12. Destroyed on the field, two. You know, I hate those. 159 is not bad at this point in the game, though. Uh, you lose quite a bit at the Philippines just to start. Uh, destroyed on the field for him, zero. Destroyed by Flack, we had zero. He had 24. Our flak at Colombo is really good. Uh, they really powerful flak guns out there. And so they're firing those tracer, tracers up into the night sky. 
and they took uh, quite a few Japanese aircraft out, 24 of them. Operational losses, we took 10. He took 13, so kind of high on both sides there. Uh, a lot of this obviously happened in and around Colombo. The air-to-air -air losses, he got the better of us, certainly. Uh, we destroyed quite a bit by flak, and then we also must have damaged some. He damaged some. They couldn't all make it back and took an operational loss. We have 257 political points, including, you know, we continue to lose points for the dang D Joseph T. Dickman. Uh, I'm moving on. I'm not talking about the Dickman anymore. Allied score, 7766. Japanese, 18,156. So right now, if our score stayed exactly the same, he would need about 30,000 here to win in 1943. Got to be four to one. Scoring, uh, Allied basis control. We've got 420, and he has now got 418. Now, ours are worth quite a bit more, the bases here. They're not all equal worth, right? Uh, for instance, Pearl Harbor is just worth a gob of points. Um, but he's closing in there as far as just the raw number. Allied aircraft points lost. We're at 1267. He's at 794. Not terrible. Not terrible there. This is bad. Uh, 7934 on our army points lost. He's only lost 181 points. We're just not blooding him at all, really. He's marching where he wants to, and we haven't been able to put any kind of herd on him. Uh, certainly the AI, you put a herd on their ground forces uh, in various places, whether it be China or Java or whatever. He's been very smart about how he's kind of, you know, consolidated his ground forces and made sure that he doesn't get ambushed by anything. And that there's no army that uh, that's currently on the map anyway that can take him on. We have lost 431 ships. Pfft, not great. He's lost nine, probably more, but we're not sure about that. Ship sunk if we go to the last turn. We lost the Prince of Wales. And that was kind of the big thing that happened in the last turn. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold on. Got a good drink. I got all excited about the Prince of Wales. My goodness. Uh, well, I'm upset about it, but I, I don't know how upset, really. I mean, the Prince of Wales, when you start the game, is with the Repulse just off Singapore. They Oftentimes, you lose both in the first turn. We didn't lose either. Uh, they both got into Singapore. Unfortunately, the repulse was so damaged, it was never going to make it out of Singapore, and so it, it went down um, in Singapore Harbor. However, the Prince of Wales survived. We then ran a daring mission, and I can show you here, if we get over here. We ran a daring mission out of Singapore. He was already landing here, but I didn't think he had any aircraft that he had already gotten over here, Dakota Baru or otherwise Georgetown uh, in this area. And so we ran this daring mission up the Strait of Malacca and then veered off to the west here, and we got all the way to Colombo. Uh, here you can see his carrier fleet uh, and supporting fleets around it. We got all the way to Colombo, and I thought, well, good golly, we got out of here. However, the Prince of Wales was so damaged that I dared not try to take it even this far to get it off map. Now, as part of that uh, history, one of the problems was is once I got to Colombo, he had already brought his carriers up here, and I believe... Uh, we got to Colombo, we were there for like a turn, and then his carriers appeared. Uh, somehow we had just slipped out before his carriers got over here. So I had to wait. It got damaged initially, and then it really was. It was way too damaged in his first uh, missions over Colombo to ever get it off map. And it's just been sitting here. I've been praying that we could at least get the float damage down, some of the non-major damage down, and try to you know, very limp off the map. Well, we never got there, and he bombed this time. And uh, after numerous hits, the Prince of Wales finally went down. 202 big points. I mean, uh, uh, that costs you. Uh, my goodness, that hurts. Otherwise, we lost a couple of Dutch subs here at Colombo. We lost an AK that was actually a 12-point AK. Pfft. 
Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to stop doing that, sorry. Uh, British, uh, 12 points. We lost a little AKL. No biggie there. One point. The Platypus also went down. That's an Australian uh, submarine tender worth 11 points. Down she goes. Okay, uh, that's kind of all I'm going to look at on the stats. I want to spend some time in China. Uh, I'll just kind of float over the map here. You can see it's all in and around Colombo. This is where the action is over here in the Indian Ocean portion of the map. And uh, we'll see what else he does. I, I think that, you know, his main concern, obviously, was taking out the Prince of Wales. He knew it was there. He hit it the first time around, got his carriers all the way back to Singapore, replenished, came back up, and now takes out 200 points. Uh, India, not a whole lot to say there. This is uh, also a flashpoint, obviously. Rangoon, he has now moved into Pagu. I don't think there's any way we can stop him. I mean, we've got 710 assault value. He has got 95,000 men, 708 guns, and 243 AFVs sitting here at Pagu. If I had to guess, that's probably an AV around 3,000, and we have 710. Uh, we're not gonna, we're not gonna survive. Now, I don't want to just abandon Rangoon. I want him to have to come across here into a pretty decent fort level, and you know, hopefully lose a number of of troops, but. We'll see. I mean, I don't even know how much we can damage him. He's just so overwhelming in that force. Uh, he's also made his way up here to Tongu, which was, I think, very smart of him to get up here fast because that ultimately we would want to drop back to Prome, but then maybe jump over to, to uh, Tongu. Uh, it's also got a good airfield. We've got to get the planes out of here. Now, we got to get the planes out of Rangoon. we got to get them out of Tongu. Drop them back either to Prome initially, maybe. I've already moved something back here to Prome. It's the command, the 221 Group RAF. I already sent it up here by rail. It's These are still in command, these uh, aircraft are, even though they're in Prome. But I know we're going to lose Rangoon, so I, I'm just getting out of there. We've got very limited forces up this way. Now you can see, though, I've got a lot of British forces coming this way. Is it enough to deal with anything like this? No. We're going to have to go guerrilla warfare out here and try to get around him, behind him. He's done the same thing out here in Burma that he's done in China, which is just make this super force. And when they, when he's got that, uh, there's no way we can stop it conventionally. And so we're going to have to break up our forces and try to cut off his supply or otherwise harass him. Uh, because there's just no stopping him. I mean, even at a place like Calcutta, we've got uh, what? 591 av that like i said this is going to be like 3000 av um uh, when i say av i mean assault value okay if you're kind of new to to all this now you can see the stuff that we got heading out here it's these british brigades i believe this is a this is actually a battalion this is the dogger battalion uh we've got another a battalion there, another battalion there. So these are not, you know, massive forces. We've got some mountain assault guns. Uh, they're coming down the rail. We've got at Akiab, I've got a rifles battalion. I've got uh, the Hyder Lancers are down here. You know, we just don't, do, we don't have enough to stop him. And so we're just going to have to get really creative with it. All right, we'll come back to China. We're going to talk about that, obviously. He's right outside Palembang. So he's right outside Rangoon, right outside Palembang. He's now forced us out of the mountain fortress of Banduang, and these uh, guys are going down to Batavia, but he's now right outside of Batavia. And uh, at Batavia, what do we have there in Av? We've got like 9, 10. Once these guys get here, we'll be over 1,000, but he's probably got another 70 or 80,000 men there. He's also in the hex at Chijilijap, and so, you know, he's going to take all of java here soon you can see he's got us on the run on the southern part of the island uh again just can't stop it we can't stop it uh and these guys are completely depleted they're not long for this world uh Dar okay australia i think i'm going to talk about australia next time i don't think there's anything maybe to point out you know, that's obvious, like a big, big issue here. Um, I'm trying to think, where are his carriers right now? I don't think these are them. 
He's got a number of destroyers and CSs here coming around. You know, he's now taken Port Moresby. So he's going to be trying to get as much into Moresby as he can. You can see I've got submarine station here, 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 here. Trying to stay in deep water where I can. Uh, but I'm trying to cut off every supply route to Port Moresby. We haven't had any luck yet. Our submarines have been very ineffective this game. Um, I just don't remember exactly where this carrier fleet is. Oh, uh, he's also in the hex at Cagayan. So he's about to take Cagayan. He's about to pay, take Batavia. He's about to take Palembang. He's about to take Rangoon. So, I mean, these are major portions on the map. Now, against a good Japanese player, you're always going to lose those things. It's just a matter of when. Have we held him off long enough? Well... I don't know. Depends how much longer it takes him. If we can hold him off in those places till the mid to late April, uh, I'll feel okay about that. I, I won't feel terrible. Uh, we talked about Pearl Harbor, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and jump up here into China, and let's go deep into China. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, Pao Shan. Is that how you say it? I don't know. I know Kung Pao Chicken, so I know that's Pao Shan, I assume. Uh, out here at Pashan, Pashan, probably Pashan. I don't, okay, I'm going to stop. Uh, what do we have out here on the western part of China? Now, obviously, this is very defensible terrain. It's mountainous. Uh, it would be very difficult for anyone to mount any kind of offensive here. Now, one thing I was tempted to do is start moving Chinese forces this way and then south into Burma and try to get around behind him. Uh, do I want to open up the Western Passageway towards Chongqing? Probably not. Um, I, I don't really want to do that. Uh, there is a special rule also if you move into Indochina. It activates some Japanese... Well, I think that they're actually... Um, are they Thai for... I don't know. Somebody else could, to, could speak to this better, uh, probably. But I, you... There are garrison units down here that I believe activate when you cross the border. Because I know when you play the AI, you're supposed to move out of Tangui, move down here into Thailand, and you're also supposed to cross the border here. So it activates those units for the AI. It just gives the AI a little bit of a, a boost. Um, so there is that consideration. I probably should read a little more about it right now because we need to do whatever we can. And I am tempted to come down here. Maybe, you know, he's got a small force here, Chiang, uh, uh, Chiang Mai. Um, maybe that's something we can contemplate. But anyway, let's get here and find the command out here. And here it is. It's 11th Group army and so this is everything out here is under 11th group army you can see at Kunming I've got all of our level bombers here training um, Kunming does have a level 3 airfield it's about as good as you're going to find in western China certainly this is also Kunming where you fly from here at Lido this is where you put your transport planes you can see I've got transport planes and they are flying supply missions supply transport to Kunming. And so they're flying up over the Himalayas, at least this little portion of the Himalayas, into Kunming and bringing supply. Make sure you do that uh, as the allied player. But so we've got all these level bombers out here training on the airfield. We've got 11th group army. You know, we've, 54th Chinese is under 11th group army. We've got a base force here that is part of 4th War Area. Now, 11th group army is part of 4th War Area, but you can't have 4th War Area all the way out here. 4th War Area is down here, I do believe. There it is, 4th War Area. So, you know, the... The army commands are underneath the group area commands. So fourth group area is all of these forces. Now they're way out of command, but you have to pick one or the other. And this is more important down here. Uh, so we've got another, that's a Chinese division with the 73 assault strength. Was I calling it AV? Well, it's assault strength. It's ass, uh, AS, uh, assault strength. Uh, my wife looks... Uh, at me like what are you talking about in there 69 uh, I'm so used to calling it Av in uh, war in the east that I guess that's why I do that and then you have another division here so we've got a couple of cores couple of divisions all told 508 
not bad, not terrible. We have another part of 11th Group Army down here, which is the 2nd Reserve Division. It's only got an assault strength of 50. Um, but, you know, it's just kind of manning this outpost should any Japanese forces start to make their way north. It's kind of almost like a recon garrison, I would say. Then, as we move up here, we've got Su Young. Uh, we do have a division here as well. It's got an assault strength of 70, also under 11th Group Army. And then we've got... Uh, is this a division? It is a division. 62 here, part of 11th Group Army. So this is all 11th Group Army out here. I have most of it at Kunming. That's probably how everybody would play. Uh, and then we've got kind of a few divisions that are strung out here at the other forts. Now, if he starts to come up this road, he may actually try to push this way. But again, it's very hard to get up into these mountains. It's very slow moving. Uh, very defensible territory. If he starts to come up this way, you know, we would consolidate our forces probably here because he's not going to get off the roads. You, you'll never make it to Chungking by the end of the game if you get off the road. So you would come up this road. We've got a division waiting there and a division waiting here, just letting us know if any Japanese forces come close. All right, moving down to uh, the other part of Fourth War area here. Uh, and it's stationed here at Lu Chao fourth war area and then we have ninth group army okay uh what does ninth group army have underneath it it's got 14th chinese corps 31st chinese corps 71st chinese corps so we have three corps here we've also got an artillery regiment and a base force that is directly attached to fourth war area uh all sitting here and that is a total of 847 okay well it's not enough to take on this guy uh, this stack, 123,000 Japanese troops here, 739 artillery pieces, and 263 AFBs. Again, a Japanese super army. So what are we going to do about that? Well, it's a great question. Let's see what else we have out here. Uh, this is Nanning. At Nanning, we have 35th Group Army, which is under 4th War area. Okay, it's got a couple of corps underneath it, and then we have a base force that goes back to 4th War area. Okay, so we have that, and then we have uh, Kuei Lin. At Kuei Lin, we have the 30th Group Army. Now, this is part of 9th War area. 9th War area is up here in the Changsha district, uh, but I've had to move it down here because I was worried about a big Japanese super army, and here it is. You can see we've got 894 here in the garrison. Let's make sure all of this is part of 30th Group Army. I think it is. Uh, yeah. And then we have a base force. This actually does go back to Fourth War area. And then we have a Central Reserve Artillery Regiment. So we've got an artillery regiment in here, one in here. We've got 36th Group Army. I believe it's 36th. Was that right? No, it's 9th Group. I don't know why I thought 36th. 9th Group Army. So that goes to 4th War area. But over here, we've got 30th Group Army. That goes all the way over here to 9th. I just had to bring more strength here to the south and to the west uh, because he's got a super army out here. So we've got 894 there. We've got 847 there. What do we have at Nanning? Uh, at Nanning... A little bit smaller force, just shy of 300. You put it all together, we've got about 2,100 assault strength here against what I would suspect is well over 3,000. So we can't take it on directly. This is 35th Group Army. It goes back to Fourth War area as well. And we've got a couple of corps and a base force that's, say, a Fourth War area base force. This is how I'm set up now. Now, we could ball them all up here at Lu Chao and try to take him on, I just don't think we can. Uh, and so, oh, we've also got these units that are moving back. We've got, you know, a decent sized force here, certainly. Uh, we've got 16th Group Army, that is part of 4th War area. We've got 19th Group Army, that's again part of 9th War area, so this Changsha area. Uh, and we're moving, you know, with 289 in that assault strength, 342 so now we're up over 600 with just those two cores this core got mauled at Wu Chao and so it's really not even a fighting force now this uh, second provincial uh, is got 165 
So all told now, we're up to about 2,700 assault strength we could put together here. That maybe is a little more of a fair fight, but even if we fight the Japanese, you know, 3,000 to 3,000, let's say, they will outfight us. They've got better troops, better morale. And so, again, I just don't think a direct confrontation with them makes a lot of sense. I may end up breaking all of this apart. I may, I'll may, i probably leave the, the group here at Nanning. It's only 300. But I may break these two stacks apart and move them out here individually just to give him a a Chinese unit in every damn hex that he's got to deal with. We shall see. While we're uh, over here, why don't we go and look at this group that has been bombed, you know, back to the Stone Age, literally, um, turn after turn in southeastern China. That is 32nd Group Army. It's got a core that still has 217 in assault strength and another one that's got 180. Well, that's not bad. Uh, and this is all part of Third War area. Where is Third War area? It is right here. And so, it, oh, should I get the pencil out? Uh, I want to make sure I hit the right button. I think that's, yes, that's for the pencil. We've got Fourth War area, Fourth War area. We've got some of nine here. A lot of nine here and third war area here. All right. That's just kind of how it shook out. I would have rather had all, you know, taken the ninth war area guys, put them here, taken third war area and put them there. Although third war area has got a lot of assault strength. And so that's part of the reason I'm keeping it close to Changsha. Uh, I believe here at Chang we've got Sixth War area, but we'll uh, we'll get the pencil back out because I love to draw on this map, even though I can't draw worth the damn. Um, okay, uh, so we've got this out here trying to get back to. Let's click on the map. Get on the map. There we go. Trying to get back to Hang Yang. That's where we've got Third War area. And as long as we're talking about it, let's go ahead and click on that. And you'll see here there is Third War area, the four-star command, um, only subservient to the central command, which is back in Chongqing. Uh, what do we have here? Which arm is 10th Group Army? That's part of Third War area. We've got 23rd Group Ar Army, that is part of Third War Area. And we've got 25th Group Army, which is also part of Third War Area. Now you can see their ass the assault strength is only 759 right now. Some of these units got really mauled. And you can see, I mean, we've got some things here, some you know, cores that have got a 64. This core's only got a 57. Uh, They've gotten beat up out here. Those are two of the uh, cores that we got back uh, from. They were like here, and we marched them all the way back here to Hang Yang. So they've got some really got some uh, recuperating to do, to say the least. And uh, they're sitting here, Third War area. Not a whole lot to say about that. I mean, of course, you're building up the fortification. We've only got it at a one now. We got to get it higher. One thing we could contemplate doing is uh, coming down this road and trying to get around behind this army. I think I will probably take a cavalry unit if I can find it. Uh, there's got to be a cavalry unit here somewhere and send it down this road just to try to cut off some supply. Now that thing will get bombed like crazy with all the air power he's got up. Uh, but we're going to try it. Oh, by the way, we've got... A, group, a core here, 79th Chinese Corps. This is part of 19th Group Army. 19th Group Army is not over here, I can tell you. I don't think. Oh, maybe I can't tell you that. That's 30th. That's 9th. Yeah, it's not over here. Is it here? No, that's 12th. Well, we see another Group Army, by the way. There's 7th. I think it's maybe these guys. Nope, that's 1st. Well, the other way you can go about doing this is list all ground units, okay? And we're going to take off all nations. We're going to just put on the Chinese. We're going to take off all units and just do headquarters, all right? So 19th Group Army, that's what we're looking for. Whoops, clicked on the wrong thing. 
19th Group Army, you can click on location here and we can figure out where it is. Oh, it's right here. It's part of this group that's trying to get, I thought I'd, I saw it before. That's why I was clicking on all this crud over here. No, this is 19th Group Army right there. It's got the 4th Chinese Corps, which is in pretty good shape. It's got the uh, 46th. So those are both in really good shape. And so I'm sending this down here to meet up with them. Well, hell, there's another, what is, what's the assault strength here? 410. Now we're starting to get a little more interesting here uh, as far as a direct confrontation. Uh, we'll see. I We may try to stand our ground here at Lu Chao. Uh, but yeah, 410 on this core as he comes to try to meet his compatriots here. Now, one thing you saw there is 7th Group Army is actually sitting here. Let's go back to the pen just because that was fun when I did that before. Uh, and so we've got 3rd... And sometimes you may want to do this. If you've got something that could draw on the screen where your war areas are, 7th there. We've got portions of ninth there. And we've got 4th and 4th. All right. It'll help you keep track of this, uh, of where exactly your war area. I wish you almost wish you could rename them, right? I'd make it 1st, 2nd, 3rd. Um, it would be a little easier to keep track of, but that's where they are. Now, 7th War Area, why is it down here? Well, I've kind of got it as, I'm thinking of it as a mobile reserve. Um, <clears throat> you know, Changsha is so important, and let's just go look at Changsha. It's only got 1746 here right now. He, uh, Ludric is very crafty and clever, right? He's not the type of player that's just going to directly assault Changsha. Uh, that is more of a blunt type move. He instead is going to go around the flanks. So he's coming Wu Chao, Lu Chao. And in the north, he decided to come up here. That's why I was really caught off guard by it, actually. Straight through here, Nan Yang, Cyan, Lan Chao. Because there are a lot of points available there. And we're all balled up here. Well, he hasn't assault. He hasn't come after Cheng Sha at all. Um, and so we've got third war. Did I say third? Ninth War Area here, which includes 27th Group Army and 29th Group Army. And all of these cores are underneath that. If we look at just ground units here, you can always sort them this way. We also have a unit that's in 10th Group Army. Huh. Okay. Well, let's go back up here. Where is 10th Group Army? Is it just not on the map yet? Here, let's sort this nope it is oh that's part of third war area it's sitting in hang yang right here and so let's go find that again let's search it this way by the command attached to what's commanding it 28th chinese corps it's only got an assault strength of eight. Oh, that limped back up here uh from the southeastern part of the country that's what's going on so we'll put that on move and we'll tell it to go to hang yang now, we may be better off actually uh, pause that. Let's go back across the river here. He may put a scout unit out there. I don't want him to get ambushed. They don't have a whole lot going on. Uh, but let's go back to that for a second. Uh, 28th Chinese Corps. And we're going to put its uh, objective as Hang Yang. And we'll bring it down here with the other parts of 3rd Army. Now, another thing to keep in mind is it's hard to supply all of these troops out here. We've got a red exclamation point there. We've got yellow and yellow. We've got another red one here. So, I mean, we've got a lot of troops in this area. It's hard to supply them all. We've got a base force here just in case we do want to fly in, in any aircraft. I do believe, yeah, it's got 30 aviation support. It's one of the few Chinese... Uh, unit or base forces that actually does provide aviation support so i just let it sit there in changsha just in case we want to put some fighters up here what do we have directly behind this well we've got some miscellaneous cores let's just bring up this screen here attached to we've got another core that was part of that 10th group army we're going to want to set its future objective as hang yang where third war area hangs out uh 10th group army being part of that um First group army, 49th Chinese division here. Uh, we've got first group army. Hold on. Let's go back to that for a second. First group army. 
that is back here. We gosh darn it, get off the tooltip. That we just looked at that. That's back in this area. And let's go see. There it is, first group army. It's part of the central reserve. It is not attached to any of these group armies out here. It goes back to the central res reserve in Chongqing. So we're probably going to want to take this one that's in first group army. Uh, 49th Chinese, put it on move and have it go beat up with the rest of its army group here. I may actually take these guys and bring them down the road here. And so what I may want to do instead, let's uh, right click on that. Uh, can we strategic move it? Oh, we're not on a uh, railway sitting right here. Okay, uh, let's have it head towards Kuei Lin. And then we're going to take these guys from this first group army. Again, they're not attached to, or I shouldn't say that. Uh, yeah, first group army. They're not attached to a, a war area. Um, we're going to also move these guys. So they're on move already. They were going to come into Chongqing. We're going to have them come down to Kuilin as well. So I gave them that order right. And then we want to set all to follow set all to this op mode so they're all all every unit in this hex is going to go to move and they're all going to follow this command and set future objective to Quay Lin. and that'll give us a, even more here what all does he have here he's got divisions i believe 87 assault strength 80 assault strength and then whatever this 10th is nope sorry it wasn't in that hex, it was in this hex. Uh, first group army, that's also a division. So first group army is all divisions. Well, that's fine. We can have them maybe hold the hexes behind or we could have them be the ones that move out here since we're only risking divisions and try to get behind his super army as we run our guerrilla war. Um. <clears throat> I tell you what, I'm about halfway through here in China. I, th I think I'm gonna call this an episode. I don't want them to go on too long. I'm gonna do another combat resolution. And when we come back next time, then I'll do, there's not a whole lot to do up here on the plateau. These are a lot of reserves, other things we're moving places. But next time we'll focus on this area in China, uh, all the way up to Lan Chao. Uh, but I don't want this one to go on too long. I think it would take me another 45 minutes or so. So I'm going to split them into two. I'll come back with a combat resolution. Then we'll get up here into northern and central China. Hopefully you found this interesting. Uh, I know I did. I love to talk about this game. It's a great game. Uh, my favorite of all time. <laughs> I say that all the time. Anyway, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Uh, going to get more episodes out. It just takes a long time with this game. You know, the setup is sometimes three to five hours. And so, you know, look, I try to push them out as fast as I can. Uh, I try to tell Lodric the same. So anyway, you guys be good. Uh, and I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.